Day 88, let's see if we can use Replit authentication in a bit more of a subtle and more useful way. So far, we've really used the authentication hammer. We've put the biggest, baddest bouncer on the door that says, Oi mate, if you're not a Replit user, jog on. And that's on every single page. So no matter which way we go to the site, we have to authenticate. Now, for a blog that we've been building, that's not ideal. You want most users to go into your page and just see your blog if they're not logged in. That would be the ideal situation. What we have at the moment is a user goes to your page and is told to log in. This is really gonna limit your audience. If the user has to do anything, unlikely to, if all they wanna do is read your content. And if they're not yet a fan of yours, then they may never read your content in the first place. Luckily for us, there are some more subtleties to Replit Auth than we've used so far. Let's start up the Flask app and let's turn on Replit Auth. I'm gonna pull my, I'm just gonna pull my login over to the split on the side and turn off my other page so we can look at both at the same time. So my authentication is turned on now. And as you see from this page, it asks me to log in no matter what happens. Let's see if we can change that up a little bit. Let's tell it to use our own custom button. Now this works a little bit differently because this allows us to tell it which pages need the authentication and which pages the login button should appear on and also where it should appear and what it should look like. So this means we get the opportunity to add in some HTML pages. So I'm going to add in my template. Once again, I've written a very simple web page and I'm going to go back to my main.py file and add the code to bring that in. And here we go. When I run this page now, everyone can see this. If I open it in full screen view or anything like that, the authentication page is not going to pop up. Let's add it in. I'll need to go back into my HTML page. And what we need to do is put this package inside the head. Reloading the page means that's going to load that authentication part into, into memory. And when I want to have the button, all I need to do is make a little space and insert the button. And I'm pretty much there. If I stop and rerun my site now, Everyone can see this page, but I have a login button that will pop up my Replit login. I'm currently not doing anything when a user's logged in, but I can now start to pick up a few more things. So let's do that, shall we? So now if I go full screen and I log in, I'll be pushed to that page, which we haven't built yet. Whereas on my incognito window, I'm still getting that normal site, which is pretty cool. Let's build that hello page. So. Hopefully this should print in the username. Let's give it a go. Nice. And we can even have a little if there to kick them back. If they try to go to that forward slash high and they're not logged in, they should be kicked back here, which is great. So on my incognito page now, where I'm not logged in, this page works fine. If I try to go forward slash high, it'll kick me back to this page. Whereas on this one, because I am logged in, it'll kick me here. If I try to go back to the original page, it'll kick me back to forward slash high as well. This means that if I'm logged in, I'm never gonna see the login page again unless I get logged out. And if I'm logged out, I'm not gonna see anything that I shouldn't see. Okay, but let's see what else we could add to that page. Because it's not just all about usernames. We've also got the user ID. Now the user ID is unique to the user. A user can change their username. Only a few times on Replit, but you can change your username. So it's probably not a good idea to store their username as the thing in your database that allows them to store data. The thing that's unique that never changes is their user ID. So if you wanted to pull in a bit of information to use as a key, the user ID is something that's worth getting. We can also pull in the list of teams that a user has, which comes in as a list, so we can check to see if they're in a particular team. Roles, to see if they've got a particular role, like a teacher or a student or a member of Replit staff. But the most exciting one is one that's not actually written here, which is a bit of a cheeky one. If I copy this and change this around a little bit to an image, and instead of asking for image, I ask for user profile image. I should be able to get my user's image that they use on Replit, which I have, but it's absolutely huge. So let's use the same things we used before, make it a bit more of a manageable size. There we go. I now have a page that my non-logged in users can see. I have a specific page that my logged in users can see, which will be different for each of them. If you go to this site, you will get your username and your image popping up. I can now do a full on logged in website using REPL Auth with very, very little fuss. I don't need to worry too much about sessions. I don't need to worry about keeping my own database of users and passwords intact. 
All I'll need to do is make a database entry for the user's ID, and I can store unique information about them that they might want to see. This is a big win from all sides. Common problems here then? Well, the most common problem is just forgetting to include the code. In your HTML code, you do need to include the script on every page that expects to have a login function, and you do need to have the button on every page where you're going to actually want to click that login button. Now, you can't change much about that login button, but you can style it with CSS so it matches the rest of the theme to your pages. You've also got to be really careful with the name in the square brackets on the headers because that is just a dictionary. And just like a normal dictionary, if you try and call a key that doesn't exist, you will get a crash out of it. So be careful with that. As usual, I've broken some code. Go and see what you can do to fix it for me. Your challenge today. We're going to take your blog engine again. We're going to change your REPL auth so it uses the custom login button. You're going to allow your normal blog page to be visible to anybody and everyone. If a user logs in and it's you, take them to the admin page. If a user logs in and it's not you, tell them off for being naughty and trying to sneak into the back of your web page. When you're done, publish your work on the community and share your work with the hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can see what you've been up to. Tomorrow is the final big website project in Flask and you will be building your own community chat program for you to use with your friends or other people or just pretty much anybody that wants to sign up for your website really.